Behaviour for learning. Some pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties are disabled pupils where their behaviour may have an underlying impairment or condition such as autism, moderate learning difficulties, mental health issues or attention deficit disorder. These pupils will need to be considered under the duty of reasonable adjustment. Pupils whose behaviour is due to social difficulties would not generally be considered as disabled pupils under the Disability Discrimination Act. In managing behaviour, DFES guidance states that schools should conduct an audit to identify where behaviour problems exist, develop an action plan and strategies to address problems, identify staff training needs, and implement strategies and review any strategies used regularly. Consistent yet flexible whole school behaviour policies can allow for reasonable adjustments to be made to meet the needs of individual disabled pupils. Strategies implemented under such policies can be effective for all pupils. The following clips illustrate reasonable adjustments that some schools have made following this process. Filsham Valley School is 10 years old. The school has nearly a 1,000 pupils, including 78 pupils with statements and well over 200 pupils with special educational needs. An audit of pupils' progress highlighted that pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties were not making good progress, and so the school has made a number of adjustments to support their learning. The children with behavioural difficulties are probably the most disabled cohort of children that we've got in the school. And it's particularly difficult because it's an attitudinal change for staff as well and, and sometimes for the public and our parents. We've completely revamped a policy that is entirely focused on positive discipline. We listened to the students. We, we had a separate group of students with behavioural difficulties and their view was that they weren't listened to and I think sometimes that's a fair view. And so our discipline policy is very much geared into recognising uh, positively and acknowledging all positive behaviour in the classroom and dealing very quickly with low-level behaviour difficulties. So that's at one level. At the other level, where we're, we're talking about children with more severe challenging behaviour, then we've got a whole raft of strategies in the school that's linked in with the SEN department um, and that uh, can range from outside intervention to alternative curriculum, uh, to part-time timetables with work experience, to mentoring systems. You know, there's just a whole range, in the same way that there's a whole range for children with physical impairment too. Luke is a Year 10 student with Attention Deficit Disorder who's benefited from the school's understanding of his needs, the support he is given through the SEN framework and many of the reasonable adjustments made. With this school, I think they realise that I do have a problem and that sometimes I do get out of hand because of it and they try and sort it out. I used to fight every single day and I'd get very aggressive and very violent but here I seem to be a lot more relaxed. I'm dyslexic and school helps with um, if I need a, something written out or in exams or something someone will come in and I might get a scribe or something and they can they've helped me with my reading. I did a because before I came here, I wasn't that good at reading. I had a, I think a reading age of eight, and I got a reading age of 18 now. Other successful reasonable adjustments to support Luke include a flexible timetable, the use of a learning mentor, and regular liaison with his mum. At Filsham Valley, one reasonable adjustment has been a social use of language group, especially set up for pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties. The group is led by a senior teaching assistant who has had specific training. Benefits around the school, we've had a lot of teachers come up to us saying, you know, so and so is giving us good eye contact now, they are listening when we're talking to them and they're taking turns and working as a group. One whole school strategy that Filsham have found very successful is the introduction of trained support staff. This is a system where a team of support staff work outside of the classroom and they work in supporting students proactively but also supporting our teachers with low level behaviour difficulties. And so the sorts of things they would do would be to pick up children that they could see obviously were visibly distressed and talk to them. They might start uh, stage one of our bullying procedure if somebody discloses to them that they've had a problem at break time. Um, they would uh, patrol the school, they manage all of our breaks and lunch times. 
they have radio contact with each other and with senior leaders in the school so that there can be a rapid response if necessary to serious incidents. But it's much more about low-level response to avoid things from escalating and to avoid conflicts from arising. It's been amazing. I mean, it's, it's hugely reduced the number of conflicts in the school. And they're all women who live on the estates of our children. So they know the children very well, which is a huge bonus. And they have um, a different relationship. Not that they're not regarded highly, but they have a slightly different relationship to the teachers in the school. So they can... Uh, they can say things, you know, for example, they might say, well, I saw you last night and I'm seeing your mum tonight, so <laughs> watch out. And it's that sort of relationship which works really well with some of our students who have very high regard for them. In monitoring the effectiveness of behavioural strategies and after three permanent exclusions which the school found unacceptable, Filsham staff have updated their action plan and identified the need for training in restorative justice and the need to improve links with outside agencies for earlier intervention. At many schools, a key adjustment to meet the needs of pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties is a differentiated behavioural policy, where behaviour caused by an underlying impairment such as Tourette's syndrome is taken into account. Hartley Brook is a large primary serving an area of high unemployment and social deprivation in Sheffield. Jamie Kilner was appointed as head two years ago and one of the first things he and the staff did to address the school's difficulties was to carry out a behaviour audit, draw up an action plan and then completely revise the school's behaviour policy. We had a behaviour policy that kind of went from disruption in the classroom to exclusion and there was there was nothing really in the middle was there there was no way of stopping a child going on that very slippery slope from being disruptive in the classroom dis disruptive in the playground no safety nets in place and then out on um, a fixed term exclusion or a permanent exclusion at some stage the school's revised behavior policy is supported by two other key adjustments learning mentors and differentiated behavior management one of the, th the great things that we've done here is to talk about differentiated behaviour management. In other words, there are some children that we handle in different ways. And the offshoot of that is that other children now realise that it's not that you're being unfair and, and that person's got away with that. They realise that some people have extra needs and those needs might be behavioural and that they are talked to in a different way and different things happen to them. But one thing we always do within our behaviour management is we ensure that if we are rewarding children with behavioural difficulties for some short-term goals, and it might be that they have remained in a lesson for a day uh, without being put out of the classroom or kicking off in the classroom, and we give some reward which might be take, being taken out of school, then we have a one-for-one. One. So they take with them one of what we call our always children, and that's the children who are always good, they're always there. So they have a, uh, it's a double incentive for the always children to be always children, but it's also that, that extra role model for them to Here's somebody that you can work with. The appointment of a learning mentor has benefited all pupils and has been key to making reasonable adjustments to support disabled pupils at Hartley Brook. Jane regularly leads social skills and problem solving sessions. This year one circle time is exploring sharing and taking turns. We started that uh, firstly in reception and we found that that is having a significant impact. If we compared reception children this year to reception children last year, we're finding that their problem solving skills have greatly improved, their emotional literacy has greatly improved and their self-esteem has greatly improved. Following this evaluation, Jane has adapted these sessions for use with classes higher up the school. Frankie is a year five pupil whose past behaviour has brought him close to exclusion. And he's a success story because that is about improving Frankie's uh, emotional literacy. It's about giving him those opportunities to explore alternatives to violence and alternatives to running away from uh, situations. And, and he's very much an inclusive part of our school and a role model that we use with children who are beginning to be disaffected, that there's Frankie who's been through that. And, I mean, we're really proud of the work that he's done there. The use of this adventure play area is timetabled into the school day. It's used to constructively channel physical energy and to break up time in the classroom. This planned use to support pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties is a reasonable adjustment. Pupils with behavioural difficulties are also supported with support workers in class and out when they need them, 
anger management sessions and rewards for appropriate behaviour. One of the criticisms I think that can be levelled at schools is that they build up a history with children and, and we get that with kids like this, what do you expect? So he's always done that, so he will always do it. But if we take it on a daily basis and reward those, even if it's just, he might have started a fight, but he walks away from it. Not forgive that, but to reward the fact that he's actually made that choice and walked away from that. At Hartley Brook, one of the whole school reasonable adjustments made to support pupils with behavioural and emotional difficulties is that staff work closely with parents and with a wide range of outside agencies. Because we found that if we worked with the parents as well, that had a great impact on the children and their behaviour in school. So part of my work is looking at the wider community and what's out there and getting people into school um, and use them as resources for, the, for our children. So we have the, the community policeman pops in every Tuesday and works with kids. Is we have workers from CAMS, the Child and the Adolescent Mental Health Services, coming in to work with classes on self-esteem packages. So we do bring quite a lot of people into school to work, work with all our children. And that's extending, isn't it? The CAMS mm. work is extending to the staff as well for yeah, their own yeah, mental health. Yeah. Reasonable adjustments to support pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties include the training of lunchtime supervisors and the provision of lunchtime clubs. We have 17 dining room supervisors who are at the sharp edge during that hour at lunchtime because if the bullying is going to take place or if the racism is going to take place or the antisocial behaviour, that will be during that hour. And so they've moved from being dining room supervisors to play leaders now. And that role really has increased the mm, amount has, of... Yeah. Uh, positive things that happen at lunchtime. We also look at alternative things for children to do at lunchtime. So we've got athletics, we have mm. uh, basketball, we have, each lunchtime we have something running and we will target either children who are vulnerable or children who are likely to be getting into, into bother so that they're not going to be in that situation where that, that will arise. So they succeed. We're not putting them in a situation that says go away and play for an hour. And, get into a failed situation that will cause violence to somebody else. We're actually giving them something to do that will help them to keep out of trouble. Hartley Brook are finding that as they develop strategies to support pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties, national curriculum test results are rising. Because of the way in which we deal with children, it does raise the self-esteem of other children as well. And it allows for karma lessons. And So we've actually found that our statistically, in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, our results have gone up. Hartley Brook has moved from a school with high numbers of exclusions to a school that, over the last five years, has had only two fixed-term exclusions and no permanent exclusions. Our children have a tremendous amount to offer their community. If we exclude, what do we exclude to? Victoria Park Primary, just like Hartley Brook, has a differentiated behavioural policy. In addition, support staff in the school have been trained as behaviour mentors and work with pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties. Jordan has behaviour difficulties and regular meetings with his mentors have helped him to manage his behaviour successfully and to make excellent progress in class. The use of a behaviour mentor is a reasonable adjustment. Victoria Park's behaviour policy is differentiated by stages and reinforces positive behaviour. When a pupil identified as needing additional support reaches a certain stage, one-to-one -one support is provided by the pupil's behaviour mentor. The behaviour mentor can come along, remove the child from the situation, take the child to one of our support rooms, um, spend some time talking through with the child exactly what the problem is, give the child some time out, give the child, which we consider the most important thing, the, the opportunity, the way back. Because if the situation was allowed to develop, in the classroom situation, it gets to a point where there is no way back for the child. They can't back down, they won't back down, there is an issue, it'll be confrontation and it'll get very serious. In the majority of cases, the child can get back into the classroom and work can start again. We avoid permanent exclusion. We, we avoid even long-term exclusions because that's no good for the child, that's no good for the parent. Um, yes, parent come in, take the child home for the rest of the day, but then they come in the next morning, they meet with the senior management team and the behaviour mentor. A behaviour programme is worked out. Um, it may be that the child goes on a behaviour report for a week or so to monitor their behaviour. Um, it's agreed with the parent, it's agreed with the child, it's agreed with the mentor, and they come back into the, the, the situation because we want them to be here learning.
At William de Ferrer's school, two strategies to address bullying are the provision of a school counsellor and the introduction of sixth form peer mentors. The use of peer mentors can support disabled pupils and can be a reasonable adjustment. At William de Ferrer's, sixth form students who volunteer receive training from a tutor who is based at a local pupil referral unit. They are trained in active listening, they are trained in problem solving, they are trained in mediation skills. Um, they will say themselves that they have increased in their confidence, uh, awareness of other people's problems. Um, it's, they also get a certificate at the end of the training so they can take that to university interviews. Pupils needing support refer themselves to peer mentors who are available in a designated room at break times. The sixth form mentors make heads of year aware of the pupils they have seen. How do you think you've helped disabled pupils? We had one child who was on medication, um, who has been bullied because he was on medication and we talked to him and we talked to the bullies and we saw both sides of the story from both of them and we helped them sort out a problem that they had um, and the bullying stopped so it's helped them both. What have been the outcomes of the scheme? It has a positive um, effect on the school in um, ethos if you like. The head teachers have actually commented that it's improved uh, the ethos of the school. And also what we know is that at least twice as many children will seek help from their peers rather than from adults. So I think from that point of view it's been well worthwhile. It's helped the school as a whole to know just the fact that people know there's a support network out there I think makes them feel safer and more confident going to school knowing that if they have a problem or if they are bullied they can come to us. Pupils with autism and attention deficit disorder may sometimes need to leave classrooms or situations to prevent an inappropriate outburst. At William de Ferrer's, after consultation with disabled pupils and outside agencies, reasonable adjustments have been made to support pupils to manage their behaviour. I have this uh, red card that allows me out and the teacher sort of just goes, OK, you can go. And I'll go to uh, F block and just um, try and sort it out with one of the teachers there. Andrew also benefits from anger management sessions. Sometimes I go out a lesson for like half an hour or something mm. and just talk to this uh, woman called Helen Brown and uh, she like goes through stuff. Like uh, if I've ever been in trouble, she'll go through that with me that day. And Circle time sessions ensure that Andrew's peers have a greater understanding of his difficulties and feel happy to support him in class. Another reasonable adjustment made to support Shane, who has autism, is the use of this small, calming workspace. At his request, Shane works here when he starts to feel stress building up. I come into the room and I feel stressed, need to get homework done. I was coming in to calm down. Shane is always accompanied by a member of staff when he works here. Some schools make similar reasonable adjustments by providing pupils with a personalised workspace which minimises the distractions of the classroom. Bishop Scarth School were able to plan three plainly decorated quiet study rooms with high windows into their new buildings. These aid concentration and their use is a reasonable adjustment to support 19 pupils on the autistic spectrum who attend the school. After following DFES guidelines, Froome Community College established the Phoenix Centre to support pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties. Many pupils who use the centre are disabled pupils as their behaviour difficulties are caused by underlying impairments. Some students with behavioural difficulties attend the Phoenix Centre at the start and end of each day. They attend mainstream lessons for the rest of the day, supported by a teaching assistant if needed. What we like to do is set them in in the morning so they will come here, have some breakfast, then sort of we set them targets for the day. Students return to the centre for the last lesson and another settling and calming session. Today's activity is part of an art project. And we tend to concentrate on the positives of the day. The last lesson they've got a positive book that they've got to write three comments in. So even if they have had trouble during the day, we still want them to find three positives that they've had. Like the people in here, like they're always helping kids out, which is really good and that, and talking to them and telling them what's the best and stuff like that. So it helps kids real good. 
you've got targets to hit throughout the week and if you hit those targets you'll get yeah. prize and that and you'll get merit to go up on the board over there because you've got something to look forward to at the end of the week or something if you've had a good week. At Froome, if a student is having behavioural difficulties, the student's head of year will set up a student family support group and a package of support will be planned. These groups include parents, staff and outside agencies and a group may refer students to the Phoenix Centre. All students using the centre have pastoral support plans. Specialist work in the Phoenix Centre is flexible and tailored to the needs of small groups of pupils. Froome College and the Phoenix Centre work closely with parents and with a wide range of outside agencies, including the Youth Offending Team, National Children's Homes and a local family therapy centre. With the support of agencies, staff run a range of therapy sessions to meet students' needs, including anger management. In anger management, we'll talk about the feelings of anger, um, that it is OK to be angry, but you just need to <clears throat> vent it in the proper ways. Um, it's how the body reacts when you're angry, why it does, all the adrenaline issues um, and how to handle it and how to sort of walk away and try to calm down. And it does, I mean they, they certainly aren't angels but it, it does um, improve and they do think about it. So yeah, it has, it's got good success rate. Another strategy that's proving effective is to encourage subject teachers into the Phoenix Centre. It's a lot better when teachers come here because the students are better behaved and relaxed more, they see a different side to the student that usually would be lost in a class of 30 or would be that single student disrupting a class of 30. They can see them on a one-to-one -one basis and build a relationship and I mean it doesn't take long before it's a show in the classroom when the student is misbehaving and the teacher can deal with it a lot better and has new sort of resources and tactics to use with them. So yeah, it's, it's good, very good. What changes has Catherine noticed in the students that come into the centre? They're politer, they seem to be a lot calmer in themselves um, and whereas before they had a lot of anxieties and were all very stressed and always walked around just ready to explode, they're a lot calmer now. I say our biggest success are students that before were thought not to be able to enter into exams um, and were truant in quite a lot and their attendance was just less and less and their input was less and less. We've managed to get them back on track and they've sat there um, mastering English GCSEs. At West Bridgeford, the school's pupil-centred ethos is supported by a wide range of strategies designed to empower pupils, to involve them in decision-making and to prevent behaviour incidents and conflict. Through school council, pupils have developed their own playground rules in response to concerns that vulnerable and disabled peers were sometimes feeling left out. Pupils are supported to problem-solve through class and school councils and support groups called PALS or Friendship Circles. Staff receive training to facilitate PALS groups where peer support is nurtured. What do you do if you see an incident? We'd go up to them and say, um, would you just like to come and just sort this out? And we'd get a peace buddy and they just sit, we sit down and sort it out. And if this keeps cropping up all the time, then what we do is we get a friendship circle, a PALS group. And the peace buddy person would go up to the office and say, Miss Daly, can we have a PALS group? And she'd give us a time and day. And we'd go up there and just review on all the problems, like, once a week. Tell me about the anti-bullying contract. It's a sheet of paper where somebody has been bullied, we decide to read it out. And it's got a couple of rules on, like, saying, even if the person who's bullying you is a friend, you still have to come and talk to someone. And the final one is if in doubt, shout out. And we all stick to them because we, we like, don't exactly want to fall out because our school, right, well, we kind of develop a friendship with all our friends. This whole school assembly has been led by the school council. Lauren, who has dyslexia, is taking the minutes today. An adjustment here is that she is using a tablet computer to do this. Things that people say, I write them down and then we take action and I write the action down. During this morning's assembly, a peace buddy volunteered to help resolve a conflict which involved a pupil with autism. Because you're not involved, the children know it is theirs. They have to have credibility and they sustain that credibility. What always impresses me too is that their assemblies are the most silent 
uh, of all of the assemblies that, that I lead or other mm. members of staff because it's the children's mm. and you can see there the tangible essence and the quality of ownership is, uh, is incredible. They're all respectful, that's the big word for our school. The school's ethos and range of whole school strategies has been found to improve behaviour, reduce bullying and increase achievement. Pupil input through school council and staff evaluation are used to regularly review and update policies and practice. Throughout our visits to schools, the project found that reasonable adjustments made in the following areas were all effective in supporting pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties. Listening to pupils, peer understanding and cooperation, working with parents, multi-agency working, a pleasant physical environment, differentiated behaviour management and staff training and support.